Hello and welcome to another Inside EVs video and welcome to another 70 mile per hour highway range test. Today's subject is the 2021 Polestar 2 with performance pack. Now this isn't the longest range spec. This is actually the least efficient Polestar 2 you can buy with the 20 inch wheels and the summer performance tires. But I'm gonna take you on a full tour of this car. Then we're gonna get it out on the highway and see how far it goes until it completely dies back here at this station. <laughs> Now, if you're not familiar with Polestar, don't feel bad. This is a new automaker with roots in Geely and Volvo Group. So it sort of looks like a Volvo, it feels like a Volvo, but it is not. It is a Polestar. And naturally, Polestar 2 means it is the second model, the second iteration, and that is true. If you go back in our videos somewhere, there's some videos of a Polestar 1, which is a plug-in hybrid vehicle that is in very limited numbers, a very special car, very unique neat car uh, where that had a 33 kilowatt hour battery pack paired with a turbocharged and supercharged four-cylinder engine. Pretty neat car, almost like nothing else on the road. But here is the brand's second iteration. It is a full battery electric vehicle. You can see here we're CCS charging on a charge point station. I'll talk more about that in a second when I'm done showing you around the car. It has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, gross, I believe 75 kilowatt hour usable. At least that's what it was when it was new. Forgive a little bit of the stuff in the back, but you can see the orange seat belts here denoting the performance trim on this particular car and we are going to see how far this car goes at 70 miles per hour in our loop style test before i go through the testing procedures let me show you a little bit more again i mentioned this car is the least efficient version of polestar 2 this is the performance pack so you'll see here the giant brembo brakes absolutely awesome we are on 20 inch summer performance tires here, as well as a non aero wheel. So this is gonna be very interesting to see the worst performing Polestar. And then for model year 2022, there's actually a front wheel drive variant removing the rear motor. Um, I personally think they should have made it rear wheel drive instead of front wheel drive. It wouldn't have affected the snow performance because there's not a lot of weight over the front. Uh, so, you know, that's my opinion. I think they went the wrong direction going front wheel drive over rear. However, that is going to go farther on a charge. Also, we'll see the addition of the all wheel drive variant getting a heat pump, which this car doesn't have. So let's take this test as a baseline, a starting point for the Polestar 2 in terms of range. And then we will update the story over time with different variants as we go forwards. Let's talk range test. Here is how the testing procedure is going to go. I am charging now up to 100% until the car completes on a DC fast charger. The reason I do this at the start of every range test is so that the battery pack, the drivetrain, the whole high voltage coolant loop can get everything up to a nice and warm temperature. It's a perfect night for range testing. It's about 72 degrees, absolutely amazing. Almost no wind, which is very rare for this area. We're gonna be starting here in Wellington, Colorado, going up to Cheyenne, Wyoming. It may be the first Polestar to ever go into Wyoming. Then we're gonna go east on I-80, back to I-25 and down here. So we'll kind of play it by ear, but it's a very important thing to do a loop style test from a completed charge until where the car won't move. The reason is elevation differences uh, by if we increase in elevation on the way there, we'll decrease on the way back. Also for wind, if we have a headwind one way, we get a tailwind the other. It's never truly scientific, but we do try to remove as many variables as possible. The other reason for going to a completed charge until where the car won't move is sometimes the BMS is wrong in the cars, especially with newer EVs that don't have fully calibrated software. I'm not saying that's the case for this car, but what we are able to do is say, when it shuts off, that's full. And when the car doesn't move, that's empty, regardless of what the gauges in the car are saying. So tire pressures I set at manufacturer suggested pressures all around. We are gonna be finishing charging here pretty soon, and then we're gonna be jumping out at a GPS accurate 70 miles per hour. 
Now, funny enough, when I test combustion vehicles, this is actually where I do all of my MPG testing. I start and end here, of course, in a loop style test. And now there are four charge point stations installed. These, this is an interesting story with this station. We won't get too much into it, but these were installed, I want to say six plus months ago and now are finally operational. Interestingly, it's a 125 kilowatt unit, but it's shared across multiple stations. So I don't know if it's shared across all four if they're shared in pairs but I'm happy to have this in use and updated and and running and we're able to perform our range test in the same place should be good and just one last note before we get going I do want to mention we are doing these tests at night and I do have to run headlights and I always get inundated with comments like aren't the headlights killing the range well look I don't want to say no because they do take some power to run but these are such low power LED units that I don't think it's going to make much difference. I could like, you know, squeeze the pedal a little bit harder and that that's sort of that negligibility of what we're getting into in terms of range difference. Anyway, love the looks of the Polestar 2. Personally, I think this car looks incredible up to the C pillar. I think it just goes a little downhill here. I kind of wish it continued back in sort of this wagon fashion, but that's just me. Um, so many people have been complimenting this car, driving it around town today. I would say at least eight or nine different people came up to me either at stoplights or at charging stations and were like, that is wild. Who makes that? I'm like Polestar and they're like, who? <laughs> so I think Polestar has a ways to go for some brand recognition. Hopefully videos like this will help bring a new audience to their vehicles. But overall, the spec on this car, performance in this really nice gray color with the ventilated Napa seats inside. It's a gorgeous car with really nice material usage throughout. Uh, it's put together well. Listen to that thunk, almost like a G-Wagon the way the doors close build quality certainly on point here in my experience we're at 98 percent state of charge the combustion vehicles are starting up so let's let this thing complete and we'll head out getting close to being finished here i just got some waters some very healthy snacks of course but um, take a look at this you can see here we are charging at 10 amps and 451 volts on the high voltage pack Polestar 2 has an incredibly high voltage pack for being in the 400 volt class of EV is dead I want to say is 380 to 390 you'll have to head to out of spec reviews to see the 0 to 100 percent DC fast charge test that will probably go live after this video but I love the information it gives you one of the software updates that this car got actually changed showing the charge rate I believe in miles per hour to kilowatts which is much more relevant I think for our sake uh, let me show you some of the stuff here the UI on this car is truly truly awesome it's a whole Google operating system feels just like a smartphone really snappy really great we'll go system we'll go to software update it's going to check for updates there's none available this car has the newest it's 2126 but take a look at this we can go back and see all of the updates that this car has had over time and it's imp it's really incredible so 2127 says electric motor op uh optimization i wonder if this has 2127 because it says six so two four and then two seven two six could be a special one maybe in this class so i'm guessing because polestar said this had the newest update it actually has this two six might be for the performance trim i don't really know anyway just nice little things um updates over time you can see here dc charging charging speed shown in kilowatts when fast charging i saw that the other day i thought i wanted to share that with you uh, also take a look at how beautiful the backlighting is on this vehicle that the attention to detail in here is truly incredible the interior itself natural grain wood i really like this napa option it is four thousand dollars but just the combination of the material choices with the colors works really well anyway we're just about ready to leave so as soon as it ticks over i'll unplug it and we'll head out on the road and we are all charged and indicated 230 miles on the guesso meter we are going to unplug here and there we go released thank you put this back added about eight kilowatt hours at the station again the car had been driven in dc fast charge today so everything's at nice toasty operating temperature we are going to waste no more time jump in kick the climate control on to a very reasonable 68 to 70 degrees at the lowest automatic fan speed and hit the road. 
to start the pull start, all I have to do is foot on the brake, back on the shifter. We are already in drive. Lights are on. We'll turn the interior light off. We have the gorgeous Polestar logo shining in the glass roof here. 100% state of charge. Let's see. Let me make sure I reset all of our trip calculations. Uh, do, do, do. Reset now. We are at 1475 on the miles. Just so we know, just in case something fails. It is known to happen, actually, in a lot of our tests. These trip calculations break. Again, not on the Polestar. We're gonna jump on the highway. I'll be updating you every, I don't know, 25% or so, something like this. I'll update you if anything interesting happens. But to merge onto the highway, it's just about a half a mile on these back roads uh, merging up. It's just over here. And we are gonna be gently cruising up to 70. Once we reach 70 miles per hour, my procedure is to check my GPS uh, speed and make sure that that is a GPS accurate 70 miles an hour. If not, we will compensate. And then I will put the car on Volvo's, excuse me, Polestar's pilot assist, very similar to Volvo's system, which is lane centering and adaptive cruise control. It's a great system, works really well, very pleased with it in all of the cars that I test. And it should be a nice night starting at 9 p.m. Roadway is looking nice and quiet. Here we are crossing into Wyoming. Is this the first Polestar in Wyoming? Probably not, but let's just say it is because that'll be fun. You can see I have configurable screens up here so I can move things around. Really nice. Have to say the infotainment on this car is absolutely stellar. They are killing the game when it comes to this Google integration. Great settings. It doesn't lock you out of anything when you're driving. It's just, I don't know, the way I like it to be. You can see everything is accessible while driving. Really, really nice. Um, unbelievably quiet in this car. Have to say, sound deadening is e-tron levels. Feel so solid, built well. Not a squeak, not a rattle. Uh, which is hard for EVs to accomplish. I will say though, with the performance suspension, it is pretty firm. It is adjustable. I don't know where it's set right now in terms of stiffness. I think it's set right in the middle. We can play around with that in our driving reviews that I'll be doing tomorrow. We've blown past Wyoming and somehow I'm now in Nebraska on I-80 heading east. Wow, that's pretty crazy. I'm at 63% state of charge. We're averaging about 333 watt hour per mile so far. Gotta say, pretty impressive. Um, Pilot Assist is doing a great job of keeping us in the lane, and I'm just about to flip around here. Take a look. So we're making a U-turn here, going off the exit. This is the first time I've kicked it off 70 miles per hour, and uh, we're gonna merge right back on the highway. Every range test, we do a couple of these loops, of course, as we try and run the battery down. Right now, the car is predicting a 20% arrival back to the charging station. Its predictions are extremely accurate. We're talking Tesla levels of accuracy on arrival, which really, I can only say about Taycan and e-tron. That was a complete stop, right? Well, we are literally in the middle of Nebraska. I mean that factually, we are here and there's, yep, the saying is true. There's pretty much nothing we could hit anyway. <laughs> so we are just going to gently merge ourselves back up to 70 miles per hour, minimizing as much current draw out of the motors as possible. This will also reduce heat loss inside the entire drivetrain. Wow, look at this. It's just pitch black out here using that great handling characteristics of the Polestar to get it in and make that corner quite quickly. Here we go, merging back up. This is an exciting one. Um, first time doing a range test out of this location for an EV because the chargers were just turned on. And I gotta say, it is nearly perfect. We are talking flat elevation, perfect conditions today. This is what I like to see. I'll catch up with you around 50% state of charge. We are now at 50% state of charge. Let's take a look as to how far we've gone so far. 106.8 miles, again, cruising at 70 miles per hour. Um, let's see, I messed up a little bit and reset the trip manual here about seven miles into our journey. I thought it had done that by resetting this screen. It didn't, but that's okay. It's relatively close, 339 watt hour per mile, or in the case of the Polestar, 33.9 kilowatt hour per 100 miles. You can just move the decimal. That's pretty efficient, but we are now on the return loop. We're back in Wyoming. 
heading out, heading home, back to uh, Wellington, Colorado, where we will finish this test off. We won't know the true efficiency of this car until we get it back to its starting point with a basically zero elevation difference. Back to maps here, beautiful Google Maps on this car. Can't say enough good things about this infotainment. I really enjoy it, really like it. And uh, let's keep cruising down the highway. It's a beautiful day for a drive. Nearing the end of the range test here, we have reduced power due to low battery. We are officially in turtle mode. We're not gonna listen to that, nor are we gonna get off at this exit here. Do I want to find a charging station? No, I already know where I'm going. Don't worry, Polestar. Uh, we are gonna blow past this exit and uh, turn around, go, you know, go up to the next one and do another loop. The thing is with the Polestar, let me explain, because it's gonna get real interesting here. The really interesting thing is with the Polestar is once we hit about 7% state of charge, it goes to turtle mode, but it limits the power like crazy. So cruising this last little bit, especially after we make our loop and head back, I'm not even sure if we're gonna be able to maintain 70 miles per hour. Earlier today, I did the zero to 100% DC fast charging test that will be on out of spec reviews. And I was having trouble maintaining 55, 50 miles an hour. The car is now predicting a 2% arrival back at the charger. So we're cruising at 70 just fine now, and we'll just keep it at, you know, at 70 or as close to it until we get off the highway. Let's see how it does. We are having no trouble maintaining 70 miles an hour. I actually have it at 71 right now, just to counteract a little bit of difference that we had. Um, taking it off of 70 miles an hour right now, 216.5 miles roughly at 70 miles per hour on the highway. We will now cruise back roads to finish off the test. Um, pretty interesting, and I will say the power degradation, not nearly as bad until you reach probably right around now, 3%, 2%, 1%, then it'll really start cutting. Anyway, we are nearing, again, full loop. There's a nice road that we can travel about 55, 60 miles an hour on down this way. Yeah, that's pretty hard on the throttle and she doesn't wanna move too fast. And we're basically just gonna do a loop back and forth until it runs out. This is awesome. We're on a little side road parallel to the highway maintaining about 60 miles an hour. Still pretty good highway speeds. I think we're gonna make a U-turn now as it's suggesting a 0% arrival back. So let's just regen down here. We'll just make a quick U-turn. This is amazing doing it at night. We kind of can just go to the perfect distance. Let's test some of that turning radius. A little bit trippy to see if cars are behind you if they're actually on the highway. That's a little weird. But um, back we go, gently up to speed and Let's uh, go to the charge point charger. It says four of four. It's a very fast charger, 125 kilowatts. I wouldn't say that's very fast. I'd say that's fast, but not. <laughs> it's not crazy. Anyway, that's pretty much wide open throttle right there. So we'll just gently pull it up to speed. You don't want to stay flat to the floor uh, in most circumstances because you don't want to pull all that voltage out of the pack and make it brick early. However, I believe that is a software uh, control to not allow you to pull that much voltage out of the pack. Polestar is pretty conservative near the bottom, but I will say, yeah, this is almost too dangerous. Like I'm, st I'm foot floored again, just for reference. It's a little bit too dangerous below, let's just say 3% state of charge to drive on crowded public streets, I would say. And that's me, you know, I'm usually pretty adventurous. Anyway, 2% state of charge heading back. We're back up to 55 miles an hour should be good and we've arrived and finished the test off properly empty battery plug-in vehicle zero miles zero percent of course take a look here 221.6 miles uh in the polestar 2 with the performance pack and because i don't want to damage the battery pack let me get this plugged in and then i'll explain why the results are what they are well, we are finishing off where we started a few hours later. I obviously am pretty tired. That was an interesting test though of the Polestar 2 
performance pack. Now, our colleague Tom Malagny, I don't know if it was on this channel, but he did a range test with a Polestar 2 non-performance pack, and I think it was like a 10-mile delta, 15-mile delta, which is to be expected for summer performance tires. So it's all seemingly in line here. When this car got down to 1% state of charge, though, it was barely doing 25, 30 miles an hour. My foot was to the floor. I pulled in here. Uh, with an indicated zero miles of range as I was backing into the charger it dropped down to zero percent and said empty battery so we got everything out of it that we could that's the proper way of doing a test and uh, really happy almost perfect conditions for the range test here um, weather very consistent again starting at 72 it's about 63 degrees Fahrenheit now a little bit colder I'm excited to see how next year's edition of the heat pump will help probably some and the front wheel drive versions I think are just going to go a lot farther especially on those aero wheels personally though I would get the performance pack on the Polestar 2 I think it looks great I love the Olean suspension I love the Brembo brakes I think that's just so cool to have some true performance suspension on an EV I have not driven this hard in the canyons yet though so let's stay tuned I think I need to dial in the suspension a little bit it's a little understeery around the roundabouts just kind of pushes up front but I think that can all be adjusted anyway just gonna fill it up charge it up to uh, I don't know 30% here drive it home charge it overnight get ready for a whole new day of motoring tomorrow and uh, great little test here the Polestar 2 and make sure to stay tuned because we also will do a 0 to 100% DC fast charge test on this car the two things you need to know on a road trip how far can you go and how quickly can it charge we'll have all the info for you on this car